Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going over the latest Motion VFX pack for DaVinci Resolve, and that is M Mockup Clean. This is a collection filled with clean and modern device screen animations that help you present designs, functionalities, and more. We have everything from full-size displays, laptops, tablets, smartphones, and even watches. So let's dive into it. So once you've installed the pack via the M installer, you want to head over to the effects tab and search that in. Here you'll find 30 different effects that are sorted via device type. They're super easy to use and intuitive where you'll drag the effect directly onto the clip and begin customizing from there. Before we do get started, however, I do recommend just hovering over all the different effects. That way you can start to get a feel for what this pack has to offer. Then if there are any that catch your eye, you can just hit the star button, then they'll go into your favorite section. Now, everything I'm doing is pretty standard and will work across all the different effects. But let's start off in the display section where we have the wider screen mockups. So I'll drag this display desktop effect onto the clip. Playing that through, we can see it animates in and then we have our footage inside the screen. Now to begin customizing that, we're going to go into the inspector tab. And the first thing you want to do is hit this 4K quality box if you're working on a 4K quality timeline. That's going to ensure that the sizing and the quality is correct. Then we have these in and out points, and these are going to control how the layer animates when it starts and ends. Next, we have the content controls, and this is the overarching control center of the entire effect. So here we can control the positioning, the scale, and the rotation. And these will be standard across all the different effects, but if you do want to return back to default, all you need to do is just double click on the option name and it will just snap back. Next, we have the media controls, and they will look the exact same as the content controls, except they're only going to control the footage you have inside the drop zone. Then we have the device controls, which allows you to manipulate the device your footage is sitting in. So first we can choose whether or not we want the color, then we can control the color here just by clicking into this box and dragging around where you want the color. Then there's a few more options to further dial in that look. So you have the brightness, the contrast, and the gamma. Then we have the device background color. And right now, the way we have our footage set up, regardless of what color I make this, the color is not going to change because we can't currently see the background. However, if I was to go up into the media controls and just reduce this in a scale, now if I change the background color, you're going to start to see that change being made. And lastly, inside the device controls, we have the device shadow. That is pretty self-explanatory, just gives a shadow of the device. Then the background controls, which control this white background we have behind. If we do want to show footage behind, we can just toggle that background off and then show the real footage. And that's pretty much that. So let's dive through another effect that has a few more elements. And for that, I'm going to go for the tablet hands. So I'll drag that onto the timeline and then I'll just instantly tick this 4K quality box and then I'll again remove the in and out points. So I'll skip over the content controls as that is the exact same. And then in the media controls, again, similar thing, but what I will do is just slightly zoom out so we can get a bit more of the image. Think about there, that's good. Then now going to the device controls, we can see we have a few more options. So the first thing we do have is this iPad rotation. So it's currently set to horizontal, but we can change that to vertical. And then I will just adjust the scaling there. But for now, I'm gonna keep it at horizontal. Then we have the device color. So it's not that easy to see, but if I do zoom in, highlighting that, you can see the slight color we do have on the edge of the device. And everything else inside the device controls is the exact same. So then we'll move on to the hands control. And here you can choose whether or not you actually want hands. So I can select the hands here, choose whether you want both hands, maybe you want just the left hand, maybe the right hand. Then you can change the gender of the hands. So currently we have some female hands, we can make that male. Then we can also change the skin color. And then we have a bunch more different color options so we can really adjust the hue of the skin to get it to our desired look. So for now, I wanna go back to both hands, female, white. And one pro tip when you are adjusting these sliders, as they are quite sensitive as you do start to move them. So I would actually click and hold on the numbers to start dragging as opposed to the slider here, just so you can get some more exact refinements. One thing you will want to consider when you are using these mockups is if your footage needs color grading. So take this close up shot of the leopard, for example. If I go to the color page, we can see I've applied a few nodes. If I was to disable them, we can see it goes back to log footage. And why I mention this is because you can't use the mockups in the same way as before. If I was to drag one of these onto the clip, we can see the colors of the hands, the phones, it all slightly changes. And that's because the color grading effects are also being applied to the mockup. Whereas if I disable all of these nodes, and then come back, we can see the colors have returned to normal. So what you do in this case is keep the color grading nodes on, remove the mock-up, and then what you're going to do is add an adjustment clip. So I will add an adjustment clip to the same length of time as this clip, and then I will drag that effect on, and now it works perfectly. 
And that's actually an easier way to use the mockups because if you do have multiple effects or color grades stacked onto your clip, it makes it a little bit harder to manage and longer to render. However, if you do have an adjustment clip on top, it makes it a bit easier to separate things and it's not so taxing on your device. Just make sure in your timeline that you do monitor the length of the adjustment layer so it doesn't go on top of other clips. And the last part to cover in this video are the effects that require multiple clips. So hovering over some of these effects, you can see we have multiple devices on the screen. Or if we were to go to the tile section, we can see there's loads of effects that do require multiple clips. Now currently it's just duplicating the clip we do have on the timeline, but that's not the intended effect. They use fusion clips that allow you to put multiple pieces of footage in at once. So the first thing to figure out is how many clips are needed inside the fusion clip. So for that, what I'll do is drag the effect onto the clip. Then in the inspector, we can see this says built for fusion clip with three sources. So now I'll delete that. I'll then add those clips to the timeline and it does work best if the clips are the same length. So I will just chop these up. Now it may look like the clips have disappeared, but rest assured if you use right click and go to open a timeline, you'll see the three clips are there. Now, when I place that effect onto the timeline, it works just like that. So I'll do the same things as before where I'll tick the 4K quality box, turn off the in and out points, and there we have a finished result. And if you maybe want to change the order of these, you can do that by heading back into that fusion clip broken down and then just reorganizing the layer structure. That way you can get a slightly different order when it comes time to playing on the main timeline. But just like I mentioned before, this pack is super easy to use and it gives you some variety in your videos to really make them stand out. Don't be afraid to mix them together with other elements and just be creative. Like for me, I really like pairing this pack with the workspace pack as they complement each other very well. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the pack. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to the website emotionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your Dwinter Resolve overview for M Mockup Clean. I'll see you in the next one.